Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our next big project. I know many of you have been waiting for this A10 build to start, waiting very patiently. Thank you guys for being patient and uh, it has finally begun. So stay tuned and we will get started with the build of the Skymaster A10 aircraft. guys so if you watch the unboxing video we are doing a giveaway for an engine test stand that my buddy Joe made so first things first we should probably get that out of the way in the unboxing video there was a couple requirements the first one or the primary one was to comment in that video using the word stand s-t-a-n-d so let's go in front of the computer and we will pick the winner of this engine stand all right, good morning, guys. It's uh, multiple days in the future, um, but uh, we're gonna pick a winner for the test stand that was in the A10 unboxing video. So hopefully this works out. Uh, I've used this before, but I've never used the word. So comment must contain the word stand. So if you're familiar with that uh, this contest, you know what this is all about. So anyways, guys, we are going to pick a winner. Congratulations to the Mr. Eds. Um, there we go. So you won the stand. Congratulations. What you need to do is reach out to me uh, via email and we'll get your shipping information and stuff. So the lighter side of our C at gmail.com. Congratulations. All right, guys. So first thing I've done here is basically unpacked the entire aircraft. And a couple of you guys have requested that we weigh everything. So we're gonna weigh everything. We're gonna keep it a little bit general, like I'm not gonna uh, show you the weights of each individual ordnance pylon. Uh, I'm gonna bundle them all together, but what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll weigh all the individual pieces. We're not gonna show you the video for all that. Uh, I'm gonna be using a small digital scale for the lar uh, smaller items, and we'll use a larger scale for the bigger items. But uh, what I'll do is I'll throw uh, some rolling credits here of the weights on all the items, and I'll give you a total as well too. All right guys, that's the weights of all the A10 parts. Uh, obviously just go back a little bit if you want to uh, check the individual weights out, but um, so 38.16 pounds for the kit um, without anything put in it yet. That is so heavy. I mean, not, I, and I don't, don't take that the wrong way, but uh, it's just a heavy airplane. It's really crazy. So pretty nuts, actually. That's, uh, that's pretty crazy. So obviously that's all the hardware and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, guys. Now, a couple things about starting the build. So when I start a build like this, um, some of this comes with experience as well, too. I like to have a list. So if you're watching this and you have gotten me to build a plane for you in the past or we have an agreement in place, um, I've already gone through and I've made a list of all the things up here that I think we're going to need. And that just comes again from experience. So what I like to do when I start a build like this is have everything um, on hand or as much as possible, right? Obviously, there's some stuff that is always going to pop up uh, like batteries, right? You're not really buying your batteries until the end when we have a total weight that we need to put in the nose to get the C of G. So but anyways, that's kind of the first big thing that I like to have when I start a build. I don't like to start the build and have to wait for parts. I like to have everything here, uh, whether that's an order from uh, one of the suppliers or whether that's out of my own stock or supply. Just a quick shout out to the guys at DreamWorks, Doug, Shipper Doug, um, thank you for your note on the last order. Very appreciative, appreciative, appreciated. I appreciate it. I appreciate you as well for packing the order and not messing it up. And uh, thanks for the comment and thanks for watching. So uh, next thing guys is I will print out the manual if it doesn't come with one, which most planes don't now. Uh, so I've printed this off the Skymaster website uh, using this to make notes and stuff on. 
but uh, this is this is the binder, right? So when when this plane is delivered to the new owner, it's got all the documents and all the documentation in the binder, and any additional sheets and information will go in the binder. So that's what I like to do for my builds as well, and just helps keep organized. Uh, the SkyMaster manuals are not amazing. The pictures are quite small, but uh, it does tell you the basics of the rundown of the stuff, all the parts, right? But uh, when you get into some of this stuff, it's it's pretty generic, small little pictures, but uh, they do have it in a checklist format. So you just go through and check these things as you do it. So it's kind of nice to have that as well too. Now that brings up the next point guys, and that brings up today's video sponsor, who is RTL Fasteners. Just wanna make sure the info is on there. So RTL Fasteners, I've been using their stuff for a long time. And uh, recently we have partnered up to get you guys a discount. So if you've never dealt with RTL Fasteners before, head to their website right there, rtlfasteners.com. And if you guys put an order together at RTL Fasteners and you use my code, you will get 30% off your order, which is awesome. All right, guys, so this is all the stuff that I ordered here. So we've got our Imperial and metric fastener kits. And just like this, we can get all this stuff organized in the packages. And just like that, guys, everything is organized. So look at all this stuff you get in these two packages. So this is our metric. This is our Imperial. We've got everything organized here. So we have the M2 size with nuts and washers and split washers. We've got M2.5. We've got M3. It came with a bag of 50 blind nuts. Uh, washers and uh, nuts and everything and then we've got the imperial side so we've got uh, 256 440 so the whole setup here as well too we've got bags of servo screws and a couple stainless uh, bags and a couple really small brass ones so lots of stuff in these kits and also the coolest thing or very cool thing is the pro drivers uh, from Bondus. Now Bondus is an, is an amazing name in uh, in tools in general, but the pro hold, it's got a little, um, it's really hard to show you, but it's got a little thing on the end, uh, like a little ball or whatever. So you can actually, you can see here, you can kind of stuff the, the Allen key into the fastener that you want to use, and then you can get it into those really tight little spaces and get it started. So very, very cool that these assorted kits come with all of this stuff. So check it out guys, don't forget the code, very impressed. Now for that 30% off, you do need to have a $25 minimum purchase, but it's really easy to do. Check out RTL Fasteners. Again, there's a link down in the description below to their website. During step number two of checkout, use the discount code JV30 and you will get 30% off your orders at rtlfasteners.com. So thanks RTL Fasteners for sponsoring this video and uh, let's continue. All right guys, so step one for me is basically we open up the parts bags and just open them into boxes. I like having this stuff visible, organized, sorted and these are the bags that they came in. So that's a uh, first step for me before we put anything on the table. So step number one in the manual is basically starting with the wings. So it doesn't give you a whole lot of description here. It just says, check operation of landing gear and doors. Okay, well, you need to get all that stuff installed first. So you have to do a little bit of thinking with this stuff. So step number one is we're going to go over the gear and anything that's metal, we are going to Loctite. So we're Loctiting, you know, all these bolts here, that kind of stuff, because generally any manufacturer does not Loctite those items. So just keep that in mind. Uh, pretty common practice. And uh, so anyways, it's nothing I'm going to really Nothing too exciting, but that's uh, that's the first step is is Loctite any screw. So we're going to go over this landing gear, use blue Loctite on everything. Pure joy, guys. <laughs> Look what I found. Trusty bent screwdriver. 
It's been in my toolbox the whole time. I did not lose trusty bent screwdriver. I did not leave him in a field. He was hiding in the depths of my toolbox. <laughs> That's cool. Seriously, I had no idea I lost this. Um, I was looking for my, I've got like this special wrench and I was digging through my toolbox and I'm like, no way. Anyways, trusty bent screwdriver has been found. Barely bent screwdriver will stay in the toolbox, but uh, trusty bent screwdriver feels like home. All right, so I figured I would show you guys how the main wheels uh, work here. So it's a seven millimeter nut on the axle. Uh, there is a just a plastic press cap that goes on there. So the wheel pops right off pretty easy. Now the reason this is important is because you don't have any bolts to tighten up from the outside. They're all from the inside. Okay, so we've got our washer and that's the system here. So you can see there's a bunch of brake pads and stuff that all work together. And the actual brake assembly is right there. So essentially we've got a few different uh, friction pads and stuff going on here, but uh, it pretty much only goes together one way. So it's quite straightforward. But the reason you need to take this apart is because we need access to all those bolts to Loctite them. So still working away on the gear. All right, guys, the three gear have been Loctited and everything is done on them. Uh, you'll notice a check mark on the wheels. So what I do is I did these last night and put a check mark on them. I won't finish a, a, a set uh, and then leave it halfway done. So I finished those two last night and then just finished this one as well too. So all the gear have been Loctited. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the radio programming so I can get the nose servo installed. Then we'll have basically the three gear ready to go inside the plane. So also what I did last night is I wrote out all of the different channels that we're gonna have just so we can get a layout of what we need. Now I'm not gonna do individual channels with all this stuff, or at least I don't need to, I don't think I'm going to. Um, with the X bus system on JR and most other companies bus systems, I could pair these air brake servos together and match them in the X bus menu. So uh, we do have some freedom here as well too. That also applies to the flaps and the rudders as well too. So when you're setting this up, at least with JR, is I would set up just one rudder channel and I'd have both of those servos working on the one rudder channel. So um, just some, some stuff to think about here. Obviously with uh, this is going on a 28X radio, we can do all of this no problem. Uh, just uh, figuring out the best course of action on this stuff. So next thing is I'm gonna pull the radio out, do the radio programming. There's nothing overly exciting about that. It's just a matter of initially mapping everything out. And the reason you wanna get that done early in the build is when you go to install servos, uh, you can get center. So you're basically plugging in those uh, servos into your receiver and you're finding the center port and then your servo horns are adjusted and all that stuff's done for you. So that's what we're doing next. All right, so all the programming's done on the radio here. I'll give you a kind of a quick overview of what I did. So I wrote down all of my channels, uh, the ones we were gonna pair up. So all this means when I'm pairing it up is we've got the right flaps, which is two individual servos. When we put that through the X bus and run those servos through the X bus outputs itself, we can program those servos as channel 15-1 and channel 15-2 and then we get to program the limits the centering and all that stuff on each of those servos with that one X bus channel so if you've never played with it it is uh, quite simple once you wrap your head around it but basically you can run four servos up to four servos on one channel so everything's laid out here the check mark means I did it in the radio. The little number beside it means the channel in the radio or the receiver that it plugs into. So it's uh, quite random. But as we go through this, 
So we've got our right left throttle, right left aileron. We've got a gear switch, which goes to the sequencer and fail safe, the Zykoi one. We've got our right and left elevator, uh, channel eight, which is our nose steering and all the rest of the channels here. Now I've got flaps and everything else that is on the X bus channels on the further out channels, which means that they're all going to be coming out of the X bus outputs. So yes, I know it may be a little bit complicated if you've never played with it, but it is really simple. So now we've got all of our channels laid out, which makes things really easy. And now we can start programming uh, things as we go along. So uh, next thing I need to do is set up my steering servo. So when I look at my chart here, I know that my nose steering is in channel eight on the receiver. So that's gonna go in the PWM outputs for channel eight. So quite simple, um, but now we can plug that in, get the channel centered, get it all set up, and then install the servo on the actual leg and gear assembly itself. All right guys, so my job, I feel like to uh, report some of this stuff, uh, the issues with these kits when, uh, when I come across them. So the hole there for the linkage to attach to the main steering leg is this size, whatever size that is, M3, I think. And you're supposed to use these ball joints to hook the linkage up, but unfortunately it doesn't fit. And the screws they give you that fit through the linkages, these guys here, they are much smaller than is needed. So we need to do a little bit of surgery on this thing. Uh, probably going to just change out the ball and see if we can use one of the bigger ones, uh, like a Dubro one. So anyways, guys, first issue. Okay, guys, so I've got the linkage all set up here and I just uh, went into the radio and adjusted the limits. So the nice thing about doing this uh, now is you've got easy access to it. So we went in and we went from 100% travel down to 75% travel on this channel. We had binding before on the bolt hitting the servo and also the, the ball joint hitting this, uh, this adjustable arm. So now we're good both directions and the actual amount of travel that we're getting on the leg is plenty. All right, guys, it is time to start on the wing. So we've got the left wing on the table. Now the gear only goes in one way. So the uh, the cutout here only fits one gear. So there's really not much to do uh, as far as figuring that stuff out. But uh, the gear bolts on, you can see the, uh, the fairing piece here that covers the gear, that's uh, already pre-drilled. Now this cylinder right here is our lock for the gear. So on the very first production versions of this airplane, I uh, didn't have this lock so the air, the gear would come up and uh, hard dives and stuff would make it fall down because it uh, is only held up by the air. But now this is sequenced as a lock. So the F-18 gear, has a lock built into the system. The A10 gear does not have a lock built into the actual gear system, but they've got a physical lock here with uh, this little air cylinder. So we gotta keep that in mind as we plumb this all together. And uh, so first thing we're gonna do with this wing is we're just gonna kinda take the uh, all the tape off everything and give it a good inspection and uh, kinda get our brains wrapped around what we need to do. So in preparation for working on the wing here, what I've done is taken all the servo covers off, marked them, so left inner, and then pointed the direction forward. Uh, so I did that on all the servo covers. We've taken the flaps out of both um, spots. Now the flap system is pretty cool on this. It's, uh, it's basically a G10 or fiberglass uh, groove, and the guides are basically bearings. So it's a nice, uh, Nice system, looks like it's gonna work quite well. Uh, we've already got our hole in the back part of the flap for the control rod to go through. So that looks like it's pretty straightforward. Um, the SkyMaster kits use uh, a decent mounting system for the flaps or for all the servos. So basically you're mounting your servo to this L bracket that gets bolted on. 
uh, servo arm is going to go down and connect to the linkage coming through those two holes. So that looks fairly straightforward. The aileron setup, we're not getting enough movement on the aileron. So we want to get uh, 35 to 40 millimeters. Right now we're getting about 20. So the, the hold up here is this back part of the surface itself right here is actually hitting that wall. So we need to, uh, to, to basically trim off some of the aileron. And of course this has the speed brake as well too. Thank you trusty bent screwdriver. And uh, the mounting for the servo sits inside the actual aileron. So looks really good. Construction wise, uh, quite impressive with all the construction. We've got a lot of carbon in there. Looks like Airex for some of the formers. And then we've got a carbon end plate here as well too on the entire wing. So looks really good. Just kind of wrapping my head around the next step on the wing. Kind of playing with the gear mounts as well too. Uh, it's pretty generic what it says in the manual. Uh, what I think I'm going to use here is number five by five eighths uh, wood screws. And the nice thing about that is all of the holes line up perfectly and the bevel of the wood screw itself sits nicely in the hole and centers everything. So it looks like it's going to work quite well. Uh, thread pitch on the hole, they're, they're basically perfectly sized for this. Put a couple drops of CA in there and it looks like it's going to work. We can't go too long on these servo screws. Um, even these guys here, the, the, the sharp tip was just starting to come through the back side. And if you go too far on those, uh, when you put the flap in, uh, it's going to actually contact the, the flap itself. So I'm sure you could use longer ones than all the other ones, but at least that one you don't want to use a longer one. A lot of time on the first wing is spent just figuring things out, especially if you, number one, haven't put a kit together for a long time like this, or this the, the kit, or uh, it's complicated like this one. So anyways, I got my lines cut, so basically just my, my power box wire, just so I'm ready for that. Uh, we're going to be using the ash lock 12 pin connectors these are good for uh, there's 12 pins so it works for four servos which is perfect for this wing so our connection point here will have uh, there'll be one connection point for all of the servos and power going to this wing so that's what we're using there um, our servos itself so for the flap servos you need long horns like this so these are two inch servo horns which is basically it doesn't say in the manual but it says long horns and uh, the picture kind of shows it near the bottom of the wing which a two inch horn gets it close to the bottom of the wing so next thing i did was bolt on the control rod the flaps use the metal control rods that come in the kit or the ball joints and they're double supported which is great and so the reason I did this is so we can get the control rod in there and kind of get an idea of how long or where that servo needs to be positioned so it looks like it's going to be probably one spline back I don't think it'll be straight up and down kind of tough to say at this point but it uh, gives us an idea of how far back we need to go with the center of that servo. Now one thing we're doing different is the kit talks about using uh, Sullivan clevises. Problem with that is we're not using fiber horns, we're using aluminum horns. Most of the aluminum horns now, the longer ones, they, they're set up for a ball joint which these ones are as well too. So I fortunately have some of these ball joints in stock. Uh, they're the metric ones and basically that's what we're gonna be using on the flaps on the servo side and that will uh, that'll work good. It'll uh, work well with those servo horns. All right guys, if you remember back to where I was talking about the X-Bus channels. So our flaps are number or channel 16. Now I just want to show you what a bus system here does. So essentially these servos are programmed now as 16s. So this is 16-1, this is 16-2. So both of those are set up as channel 16 servos. 
They go in the XBus output of the control box. Doesn't matter where we put those servos, they can be plugged in in number one and number 16, it doesn't matter, it can go anywhere. And when I flick my flap switch, you'll see both of these work as channel 16 servos. So just to show you, I'll take those and I'll plug them into like these channels over here. There we go, so we've moved them over to 16 and I think 14. And we'll flick the switch again, and they're operating exactly the same. So the servos are a little bit different. This one's back a little bit further. This one is more forward. So when you go into these menus now, what we can do is now we can change each one of these servos. So initially what I did is every servo comes as a throttle servo and you change them to whatever servos you want. So if we want to go into the other settings of the servo, now all we have to do is pick which servo we want. So channel 16. Dash, we'll play with number two. Okay, and we can go over here and we can reverse that servo. So now when we flick that switch, Servo number two is operating in reverse. So we'll go back to normal and we'll set that. So anyways, the point of this is now what we can do is we've only taken one channel to run these servos. They're both getting powered from the power box system and we can set these servos up and we can synchronize them on the limits, the travel adjust, the neutral, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got lots of different features here with uh, adjustability in the, um, the XBus menu. So pretty cool little setup, saves us channels. Also, uh, it's, it's nicer to be able to program them so they're matched, especially in a situation like this. All right, so now that we're happy with servo position, uh, and arm position and everything. Next step is we install our servo pinch bolts or servo arm bolts. And when we do that, we make sure we use Loctite. So for these servos with a, a pinch collar, what I like to do on these is do the main one first, get that seated down all the way. And then I like to back it off and then install the pinch bolt. And I'm, the reason I'm doing this is because if you do this up too tight, it doesn't allow this to pinch enough. We want to make sure that that servo arm is seated all the way down. And this is only 1.5, so it doesn't need a whole lot of torque. And then once that's done, we just snug that back up. So there we go. Our servos are done. And next step is we're going to get these mounted onto the metal L brackets and in preparation to put them in the wing. All right guys, so we got both servos uh, mounted on the L brackets. Now one of the nice things about doing this right now, it's gonna be probably hard to show you, but if I can zoom in there. So you can see the position of the rod coming from the flap and it uh, looks like everything's gonna line up nicely for us to have the ball joint on the inside. So this side of the servo arm, which is great. Um, I was worried that they would meet up perfectly, but that, uh, that's not the case. So that's awesome. And uh, so when you're mounting these servos in the wing, you always have to do a little bit of cutting and grinding. It uh, looks like our spacing and everything on the width is good, but we do need to grind out a little bit on the back here for the, the servo wire itself. So I'll do that on both of them, and then we should be able to get uh, this flap servo installed. All right, so both servos are now fitting into the openings. Basically, all you need to do generally is sand this just a little bit, uh, do the back angle for the servo wire. You wanna make sure you don't take too much off the back, otherwise you will lose that screw point, so you won't be able to put a screw in that point. So just keep that in mind if you're building one of these. And uh, so that's done. Now this middle servo, it's got a hole here on the outer wall, but there's another layer of material on the other side in between the servo and, and this point here. So that hole was not there. 
I added that hole. We're gonna have to make that hole bigger, but just keep that in mind when you look through here. Uh, there probably isn't gonna be a hole in your kit if you're building one of these. So I need to make that a little bit bigger to allow the rod to go through. All right, guys, so that is our flap uh, setup or flap linkage setup here, just to give you an idea of what's going on. So the flap setup on the A10 is pretty straightforward. It's basically uh, takeoff flaps is 50% of the movement, landing flaps is 100% of the movement. So uh, it's pretty simple. And uh, obviously we're trying to maximize the amount of flap that we are getting. But uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hook this up to the flap. We're gonna plug this in and just see how the whole linkage setup and everything works. And we will plug this servo into the XBus ports. Now remember, it doesn't matter which port we go into. I'm going to put my flap at the mid setting point. So I don't wanna go all the way to off, middle, or all the way the other direction. And reason for that is we don't know our linkage lengths and everything. We don't know if they're gonna work yet. So if you put it on the extreme and the servo, uh, th these are slow start servos, uh, all the JR stuff is now, but you don't want your servo to jam the other direction and, and damage something, right? So the middle point on your flaps is gonna be the safe spot. And we know that because we've already done the setup before we installed the servos. So let's plug that servo in and see what happens. Okay, so we're on the middle setting. We're gonna plug the servo in. <clears throat> okay, so I've reduced my travel on the flap channel. And now what I can do is I can play with the travel here to get it set up uh, mechanically good. <laughs> Sorry for the lack of amazing terminology, but that's what we're uh, what we're doing here. Okay, so just to give you a rundown of what I was doing here. So right now, our servo arm is basically as almost as close to that uh, to the wing tube as we could possibly get. What I did when I was setting up the linkage, the 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 yeah, the, the linkage arm there between the flap and the servo is I put those ball joints in all the way. So now we've got a starting point where we can start from and we can adjust from that point. All right, so happy with that servo and the setup there. Now what we need to do is install the next servo and we can adjust these two servos in the XBus menu to match. All right guys, jumping around a little bit, but before we get these two servos for the flaps installed, we do need to make up our wiring harness. So I'm going to get that made up with our 12 pin connectors. Once that's made up, I will show you some of the reasons and details of why I do things the way I do them. All right guys, so wiring harness is done up. So basically we've obviously got four leads for servo one, two, three, and speed brake. Um, a couple people have commented in the past why I don't use labels. Um, I own a label maker. It's sitting in my toolbox right there. And the problem or the reason I don't use labels is uh, number one, the paint marker is quick, uh, easy, it's permanent, and there's no labels to fall off. Yes, the labels would stick to that very well, but uh, if I do need to get this off, I just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and it comes off nice and easy. That's why I use the paint markers. Anyway, so there's the custom harness is all done up. So this is the end that sticks out of the wing. Now I've talked about this in my other videos, but the reason I use this end on my wing is if I want to play around with some of these individual servos, all I need to do is put a servo connection on here, paying attention to polarity, and then I can run that to the receiver. And now we have individual control of each of those surfaces if the wing's not installed on the airplane. Now, if we were to use the other end, uh, it's still possible with an adapter or whatever, but not as easy as just using the, uh, the pinned end of these ash lock connectors. Anyway, so this connection is done. Um, so that's great. So now we just need to get this 
wiring harness installed in the wing. Now I wanted to make sure this got done up before we did any of the servo mounting because then we lose access. So anyways guys, I'm gonna get this installed in the wing and then we'll have uh, everything done where we can start installing servos. All right guys, so I've got everything kind of mocked up for the, uh, the second flap here. It's not attached to the servo, but I've got the rod going in there and I was just seeing which side of the servo arm it fits on better. So on this one, it fits on the outside of the servo arm better. Looks like uh, the same length will work very, very well with the ball joints uh, inserted all the way on that control rod. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect it from the surface side, which is quite easy to do with the bolt there. We're gonna attach it to the servo and feed it through and see how everything works. All right guys, with the help of the Xbus menu, we now have these two balanced out. Uh, linkage lengths are all the way in on both of them and the geometry and everything seems to work out absolutely perfect. So here's a shot of the flaps. That's full flaps. That's about mid flaps and flaps off. Very happy with that, looks awesome. All right guys, and that is gonna be everything for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in to the A10 build. Uh, obviously, we could not fit all of the wing assembly in this video. It would be over an hour long, so we'll keep it realistic and uh, we'll try and keep these build videos roughly around 30 minutes is always my goal. So what did we accomplish in this video? The big step we accomplished was getting these wings started. We started to get organized for the build and we got everything laid out and set up. So flaps are essentially done on this left wing. And uh, as I've talked about before, I like to get one wing 100% complete and then we can match the second wing to this wing very, very easily. So in the next video, guys, we will be completing the wings. I think that's gonna be a big step. Obviously, we've gotta put our gear on, we've gotta put the gear pod on, we've gotta put all the pylons on, we've gotta get our aileron set up, we've gotta get the speed brake set up. So lots of stuff coming in video number two. So that is it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the videos. Don't forget RTL fasteners, 30% discount code listed down below. The code is JV30. You will get 30% off your orders at RTL Fasteners. So thanks guys for tuning into the video. Hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. It is free to do and uh, doesn't cost you a thing and you get notified when I release new videos. So thanks guys for the support. We'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.